Hello there, this is Talcon 3D with a quick tutorial on how to use null objects to prevent skewing when you're trying to create composite objects from 3D blocks. What is a composite object? Well, for example, a chair. Let's say you want to build a chair, right? So, you have a cube, you start with a cube, you multiply by simply control dragging, and then I'm going to go ahead and just make the leg, I'm going to scale this down, scale this up, like so. I know the height of my grid is 100. The size of my grid is 100 in all directions, so I'm going to use 100 for the height. And uh, <clears throat> this we're going to use this part as the sitting part of the chair. I'm going to make this 200. But I'm going to go ahead and scale this down, like so. Now, one of the problems is that when you are creating composite objects, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time and just reset it, reset so it doesn't, uh, it's not doing any kind of uh, um, uneven scaling. Right now it's 100, 100, 100 in scale. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this part to the sitting part of the chair and look what happens when I try to rotate this actually you've got to press Q first to select the child then you use the transform, transform keys like W E R uh, for move rotate and scale I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this look this weird skewing that's happening here why is this happening because we scaled down the parent it's not proportional. The parent right now is 200, 232 in height. Now, if the parent would have been 200, 200, 200, you would not get the skewing happening here. But because it is not, you are getting it. You are getting this weird skewing deformation. So how do you get around the skewing the deformation? All you gotta do, I'm gonna go ahead and bring another cube here, and use an all object. Now an all object could be anything. It could be a cube, it could be um, a 2D plane, like something from the 3D surfaces. You can use plane A right here. Now why would you want to do this over a cube for example? Uh, the reason why is a cube has 12 faces and a plane has only two faces. So if you want to be frugal about using polygons, you can use a plane. If you have a powerful video card, then a cube will be more than enough to do that. And if you have a super really powerful card, then you could use actually something that what Iclon provide, uh, which is called a helper. And you can use that as a null object. See right here, like so. See? So, and uh, basically what this is showing you is, I'm going to go ahead and select this child and move them. Right now it's in local, I want this to be in world, which is something I'm going to touch on as well because this is very important. And this is one of the reasons why this is happening, is that the reason the skewing is happening is because iClone right now is not taking in consideration the rotation while it's doing the scale. So it's doing it to, even though it's doing, it thinks it's, lo it's doing it locally, it's actually doing a weird transformation based on the parent. That's why you get this skewing happening here. In order to get around that, what you need to do, is I'm going to go ahead and just move this guy over here like so. I'm going to go ahead and use this cube as my null object and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Now look what happens if I use this as a null object. First of all, set it as dummy because the last thing you want to do is for your null objects to render so you don't want that. You want it invisible. So now I'm going to select this. I'm going to attach to the bottom part of the chair which will, this will become the bottom part and then I'm going to attach this object to my null object, my newly created null object. Now look what happens now when I go ahead, press Q to select the child, then E to rotate. 
Look, no deformations, no skewing happening. Why? Because I clone will only inherit transformations from the parent. And basically, because we have uh, between the child and this object, we have a null object. The null object is the parent, so this the, this part of the sitting part of the chair is basically the grandparent, so it doesn't inherit it from that one. So that think in terms of that in order to help you understand why the skewing is happening. Uh, the child will or only inherit things from the parent. Now, now that we have that problem solved, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset my rotation here, back to zero. It's very easy. Okay, so uh, this. So how can we use this to build something? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select this guy over here and just detached. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this guy now. Just move it. I got my snap to grid on here, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. And then I'm going to duplicate these guys a few times, so this becomes the actual uh, legs of the chair. I'm going to select this guy over here. I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to select the seating part of the chair. I'm going to move it upwards like so. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, we could scale it a little bit more if we need to. It doesn't really matter. So we can go ahead and scale it like that. So now that covers the legs as well. So that's good. We got everything going here. Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, the resting part of the chair. There we go. Or the back of the chair. And since we have this already set up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the child. And I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to name it. I'm going to name this back. And then I'm going to name this part null, so as you can better understand and select the objects. Now I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and move this guy over here. But before I do, I'm going to select the child here. And what I want to do here is <clears throat> first I want to scale this guy in 200 units uh, in width. So let's let's take the lock out of here and uh, in X I want this to be 200 units and I want in Y I want it to be 25 and in Z I want it 200 alright so this will become the resting part of the chair uh, now I will go ahead and we're pressing Q to select again and press the um, I believe it's the I key for to take you to the attach menu. That's correct. The I key. I notice here there's a little box with three dots, a little clicking. Uh, it, if you click in here, you can tell it uh, your child to inherit the position and rotation of the parent. So now if I move my null object, see my null object is selected. I'm going to go ahead and just move this. This is part of the back. It's going to become part of the back of the chair here. Like that. And move it like this. There we go. Okay, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want here. And now, because we have a null object in between the child and what you might call the grandparent. Now first of all we need to attach the null object to the chair, to the seating part of the chair. So now that's part of that. Now let's select the legs as well. Press Q to do a multiple selection here. I selected all the legs. I am going to right click, right click attach to that. All right. So now you will notice that let's say I select just one leg and I rotate it. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to skew. Why? Because you don't have an all object in between. 
but look what happens to the back of the or the resting part of the chair and uh, and and the fact that you actually use an null object in between to filter that out I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this no skewing so there you go folks that's how you can use an null object to prevent deformations weird deformations happening from uh, attached objects and grouped or grouped objects use an all object as a filter f to prevent the skewing and now you can go ahead and just go ahead and just scale that chair now uh, what I'm going to do here because this is oh, an entire group right now you can also actually bring the uh, middle bottom so when you scale the chair now it will scale to the floor and it won't go through the floor if I wouldn't have done that for example if it would have been here and I scaled it notice how it's going through the floor so this is something that you can do afterwards <clears throat> or before whatever you wish uh, but actually because this is now a full group and the bounding box is there completed this is the best time to do it and I just go ahead and I'm gonna tell it to go bottom middle to for the pivoting point to be at the bottom so when you create a scale now it scales to the floor so it won't go through the floor that's another quick trick there um, hope this was very helpful and if you have any questions don't be afraid to post them uh, in the forum and uh, this is stock on 3d wishing everybody a happy 2012 and see you at the forums thank you